my name is Michael, and welcome to my new video series on tips and tricks for building remote control hot air balloon envelopes. I've been flying remote control hot air balloons for a little over 15 years now, and started to build my own envelopes about two years ago. I want to use this video series to share tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of building envelopes to help flatten your learning curve and help your experience be more enjoyable as you attempt to build your own model hot air balloon envelope. In this first video, we'll go over the parts of the hot air balloon, differences between full size and remote control size hot air balloon envelopes, as well as the materials you need to get started. We'll also talk a little bit about making patterns so you can get started cutting your material. So let's talk about the difference between full size hot air balloons and remote control hot air balloon envelopes. The main difference is size. And size of the envelope is measured in the amount of volume of air the envelope can hold. When we're talking about volume, we usually use units in cubic feet or meters cubed. Most full-size hot air balloons are around 90,000 cubic feet. Remote control hot air balloons tend to be 2,000 cubic feet to 4,000 cubic feet. I like to build most of my envelopes in the 3,500 cubic foot range. The reason I like this size is because they tend to be easy to use easy to inflate, easy to transport, yet 3,500 cubic feet still allows you to fly in a reasonable amount of wind in the tethered condition, typically five mile an hour or less. So now we'll review the parts of a hot air balloon envelope. Hot air balloon envelopes are constructed via a series of panels sewn together horizontally to form gores. The gores are then sewn together vertically to form the envelope. Envelope shape, is highly dependent on the amount of gores in the design as well as the panel shape. Smoother balloons in the teardrop shape tend to have more gores than a bulbous type balloon that's pictured on my shirt. Bulbous type balloons also have tapered paneling to get the bulbous shape on each gore. In the picture shown here, you can see a panel circled in green while the full gore is circled in red. This is a picture of a 24 gore, 14 panel for, per gore, Z-series envelope. So let's talk a little bit about design. I'm not going to go into the specifics and the mathematics of how to generate a hot air balloon pattern, but I will use in this video the camera pattern provided on their website for free. It's a great pattern to start with, and they provide you with dimensions and measurements for a 24 gore, 14 panel per gore, 80 meter cubed, or 2800 cubic foot model hot air balloon envelope. So I've provided the link to the Cameron website in the description below. There you'll find the measurements for the 80 meter cubed Z-series 24 gore balloon. What you'll wanna do is you'll wanna take a look at those measurements and start making your panel patterns. You can use any material that you like to form your panel patterns. Typical materials that are cheap are this painter's paper that you can find at the local hardware store. This is just thick paper, thicker than your average printer paper, and is a great way to make panel patterns. I prefer to use a uh, poster board from your local dollar store. Uh, you can get this for like 25 cents a sheet. It's super easy uh, to work with. The best part about the poster board is when you're cutting along the edges of it, it doesn't tend to break down or snag like this paper will. So I would recommend using poster board for your panels patterns. Uh, it'll also allow you to make multiple balloons in the future. If you choose to keep reusing your patterns, they won't break down as easily. So in a later video, I'll kind of go over how to make these panel patterns from the measurements on the Cameron website. I believe they provide the measurements in millimeters, which is a little bit tricky. Um, and I can show you guys how to convert those to inches for those of you in America. It's a super simple Google calculation, um, but I'll go ahead and provide that. Um, in addition, when you're making your uh, panels, I can kind of show you some tips and tricks for doing that. So what you want to do is after you have all your panel patterns made, you're going to want to line them up on the floor and make sure that um, you've made them correctly. It's really critical to make sure that your panel patterns are correct before you start cutting uh, because you really can't turn back once you start cutting your material. So what I mean by this is I have an example here. This is panel 13 uh, for a 3,500 cubic foot 24 bore and this is panel 13 
This is at the top of the balloon. So this is right at the opening where the parachute top is. Um, and what I mean is you're gonna lay out each of these pat um, patterns on your floor once you've made them and verify, for example, that panel 13, the bottom here, or panel 14, excuse me, the bottom lines up with the top of panel 13. Um, this will provide you just a quick check uh, on your panels um, and your pattern before you start. So now we'll get into material. Uh, basically, your hot air balloon uh, envelope is made up of two basic materials, ripstop nylon and Nomex. You don't have to use Nomex at the bottom of your balloon, but I highly recommend it. The reason for this is because Nomex is flame proof. So if you're flying in a tethered condition, your balloon dishes in a little bit and you hit the burner, if it hits the Nomex, it's not gonna ignite or melt. If you have your bottom panel out of ripstop nylon, it's more likely that you're gonna melt and ruin panels and have to go back and fix your balloon. So I highly recommend taking the time to buy Nomex and making your bottom first panel out of Nomex. This will save you time and headache in the future. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Nomex. As I talked earlier, Nomex is a flame-proof material that won't light on fire or melt when exposed to extreme heat. If you put too much heat to it, it will start to discolor, and if you burn it or put it directly in the flame, it will deteriorate, but it's much better than ripstop nylon at handling excessive heat. I like to buy all of my Nomex on eBay from a vendor called Textile Specialist. I'll provide you guys that link in the description below. They sell Nomex by the yard, um, which means it comes in a 60 inch wide piece of material that is at least one yard in length or 36 inches in length. A yard of this material typically costs around $10, so it's fairly cheap. For the 80 meter cubed pattern on the Cameron website, you'll need about three yards to complete the mouth of the bottom of the balloon. In addition, you'll want an additional yard to make your scoop. I like to use seven ounce per yard, per square yard Nomex. We'll go over what this weight means when we talk about ripstop nylon, um, but when you buy it from textile specialists, they'll have the weight listed in the description. So this is seven ounce Nomex cotton blend black from textile specialist. The other main material you'll be using in your balloon is ripstop nylon. Here I have a roll of typical ripstop nylon that I use. The main thing you wanna be aware of when you're buying your ripstop is to ensure that it's coated. What this means is one side of the material is coated typically with either polyurethane or silicone. This allows for heat to stay within the balloon and make sure that your balloon doesn't leak. If you buy uncoated ripstop nylon, it's gonna be near impossible to stand your balloon up or keep it inflated. So make sure when you're buying your ripstop that it's coated. As I talked a little bit with Nomex, materials or fabrics are typically measured by weight. So when we're talking about fabric weight, it's typically measured per square yard, so a 36 inch by 36 inch piece. They then provide a weight of that amount of material in ounces. So for ripstop nylon, typical weights are 0.9 ounce to around two ounces or a little bit greater. Um, those weights work great for making remote control hot air balloons. When we're talking about measuring uh, fabric weight, specifically ripstop nylon, the weight is measured pre-coating. So if you take a, a 36 by 36 inch piece of this material after you've purchased it, and it's coated, it should weigh slightly more than the advertised weight. I typically use 1.9 ounce polyurethane or silicone coated ripstop nylon from Westmark Fabrics. I will provide a link to the exact fabric that I've been using from Westmark in the description below. I like this fabric because it's relatively cheap. I haven't found it from anywhere else at a better price. Westmark provides tons of different colors. They have really fast shipping and they're super easy to work with. So a typical yard price for ripstop nylon is around $2.50 a yard. For the 80 meter cubed or 2,800 cubic foot Cameron balloon that we've been talking about and will continue to use an example in this video series, you're gonna need about 100 yards of ripstop nylon to complete that balloon. So you're looking at about a material cost of $250 for the ripstop nylon. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're buying ripstop nylon from Rustmark Fabrics, $2.50 per yard is for a full 100 yard roll of a single color of material. 
If you want specific cut yardages, say 25 yards of a material, it's gonna cost you almost double. So keep that in mind when you're designing your envelope. A tip for buying fabric from Westmark is you can call them and ask them about short rolls. A short roll is similar to this, and it's a leftover roll from a, from a full-size 100-yard roll where someone has paid for cut yardage and the leftovers are available. So for example, this is a 24-yard short roll. What that means is someone bought 76 yards of this color and Westmark had this 24-yard roll of green and you're able to get short rolls for the 100-yard roll price, meaning you can buy 24 yards of this green for $2.50 a yard. So keep that in mind when you're ordering your fabric. You can call Westmark at any time and they're always happy to tell you what they have in short rolls and what colors are available. So today we've gone over the basic parts of a balloon envelope, the basic differences between a full size envelope and a remote control envelope, as well as a little bit about patterns, making your patterns, the materials you should make them out of, and lastly, the materials you need for your balloon. This should help to get you started. In the next video series, we'll talk about panel making. So I'll go over how I make these panels out of poster board. We'll go over the measurements on the Cameron website, what they mean and how to generate that pattern. And then we'll also go over basic cutting. So I'll show you guys the scissors I like to use, how I cut, um, the room I cut in, uh, and some of the tips and tricks I use so you, um, so you don't have to trace every panel. Um, just some basic things around cutting that should make your life a lot easier. So I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope this video series is going to be fun and helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe for more ballooning videos like this. See you guys soon.